In today's video, I'll be giving you my week one NFL recap slash reactions. What this is, is after every week of NFL football, I will make a video talking about every game individually. You'll know when I'm talking about games if they are games I watched or didn't watch, games I know a little bit of, didn't pay attention to because I'll have a more in-depth like thought and reaction to the games. And what I normally do is, like, for instance, this. After the Thursday game, I will start it and give my full thoughts on it so I don't forget anything. And then after every game on Sunday, before Sunday night, I will do that in that little, like, 50-minute time increment that there's no games on while Sunday night's getting prepared to start. Then after the Sunday night game, I'll do that. And then the same for Monday. Because I think it's easier to me, uh, Especially since I was calling high school games on normally Mondays after the week. So I think it's just easier on me. And it's definitely going to be easier on me because I go to college uh, on the 19th. Alright, what a start to the NFL season this was. The Chiefs beat the Ravens 27-20 by a toe, by a centimeter. Isaiah likely could not get his feet in all the way. We'll talk about that in a minute, though. Lamar Jackson, he was scrambling for his life. His offensive line wasn't giving him the protection he needed. Freaking Chris Jones was in that backfield like every single play it felt like. Uh, he went 26 for 41, 273 and a touchdown. Was sacked once, averaged 6.7 yards a pass, had a 90.8 rating. He led the team in rushing 16 for 122. Now, as a Derrick Henry fantasy owner, I have a right to be mad. Why would you sign Derrick Henry to a two-year, what, $20 million deal? And barely use him. 13 for 46 and a touchdown. What the hell is that? I get it. He's like 30 years old. So he's not going to be the power runner that he used to be. In his time with Tennessee. But he is still a productive running back. He's the king. Statistically he is one of the best running backs of all time. And yes it's his first game like I said. But I don't care. I want the king to do king stuff. Is it because he owns this franchise that they don't want to give him the keys to the football? Why was Justice Hill in for a lot of the plays, even though he had one carry and six catches, which also, why? Like, why were you willingly having Henry just chilling on the sideline and when he was in, have runs strictly for Lamar Jackson? We're going to move on. Isaiah Likely, tight end one, tight end starting controversy, I don't know, could be, but he put everything on the line for this game for the Ravens, he had that nasty touchdown in the uh, what, fourth fourth quarter, yeah, where he juked a defender out, Bryant Cook or something, he made Bryant Cook cooked, like he was so lost, and then two plays before the final play, what, like, dislocates his shoulder or something. Banged his knee so hard on the ground. Then on the final play, after taking one playoff, after being on the ground for, like, a minute or two, put everything on the line for the Ravens. This wasn't his fault, but he was out of bounds by, like, that much, man. Uh, they would have went for two as well, but who knows if they would have actually got it. But I would have liked to see it just agony and just distraught and just not what the Ravens were looking for tonight. Rashad Bateman had a really great catch, that 38-yarder on that final drive, like a few plays before the final play. Justice Hill, he was getting a lot of dump-offs. Zay Flowers, why was also Zay Flowers getting like plays for him more than Henry for rushing? I, I don't I don't know. He had some some issues though, and Lamar missed them on the second to last play. That could have been a touchdown. Lamar, come on, man. 
Then also, what's with Mark Andrews having two catches the whole game? Pretty sure both of them came in the second half. I think the fourth quarter. So, why? What What was that? Also, Nelson Aguilar missed communication on that stupid fourth down early in the game. I think the second quarter. Ugh, not a good look on you, Aguilar. Lamar Jackson got strip sacked in, I think, the second drive of the game by uh, uh, what Chris Jones. Or, I guess, Felix picked it up. Even though it looked like the Ravens picked it up, but clearly they didn't. Roquan Smith... Led the team in tackles with seven. And I hope I'm not the only one that thinks this or that saw this. But it it looked like every time he was trying to tackle Rasheed Rice, he was going like 150% of effort just trying to injure him. I mean, he did do some, some stupid stuff in the offseason, so he kind of had it coming. But, uh he was also just getting involved in a, a lot of crap on the sideline. Let's see, yeah, Simpson had half of a sack. Matt Abuke shared the other half. David Ojabo also got a sack to make it two on the day. And also Roquan Smith had a nice interception, which Mahomes, what, what were you doing on that play? I don't think the ball was tipped. You were kind of getting rushed on that play, but normally you make the magic happen out of plays like that, so I don't know what was going through your mind there. Tucker went two for three on field goals. He missed a 53-yarder, which he doesn't miss like ever, so that's concerning. He went two for two on extra points for eight points on the day, and then Stout had two punts. Over the, the Chiefs side, the winning side, Mahomes went 20 of 28, 291, a touchdown, an interception was sacked twice, 10.4 yards a play on average, and a 101.9 QBR. I mean, he's Mahomes. He's expected to do good. He does good. Always does good. Pacheco kind of had a lousy day on the ground, but he is still the hardest runner in football possibly right now. Xavier Worthy had a touchdown on his first touch on an NFL field in regular season ball. And Mahomes made sure he got that football back, which is always awesome to see. Rookies getting their first touchdown ball. Rasheed Rice, he was ev almost everything for the Chiefs offense. Worthy, burnt freaking Marlon Humphrey and just every Raven player today. He scored on just one of the most wide open catches you'll see. Noah Gray, hours before the game started, he got a nice contract extension. He did what he could do and his three targets caught all three of them. Travis Kelsey, that that's not a that's not a Travis Kelsey stat line. That's not one if I've ever seen it. Mahomes caught his own ball uh, before punting to the Ravens on their almost game tying drive. Uh, Juju Smith Schuster, I didn't know he was back on the Chiefs, but he dropped a, a touchdown. It was giving mainly Mahomes and Chiefs fans PTSD from last season opener when no receiver could catch a football. That's what it was kind of like in the first quarter. And I was like, we're not going to do this again, are we? Same with Jawan Taylor. He was jumping a lot. He was getting penalized for it more this game. But still, he was jumping and getting away with a lot of it. And there was two refs in the back behind Mahomes for a majority of the time, too. I don't, I don't know what's, what's up with that. And also the, all the illegal formation penalties on Ronnie Stanley and uh, just every offensive lineman in this game. It was kind of annoying. There's like four straight illegal formations in the first quarter. It was like, dude, just let these guys play football. I get it's a flag, but, but we're trying to watch football here. We're not trying to watch throwing laundry onto the field simulator in real life on live television. As I said earlier, Felix picked up the fumble from Lamar, I'm not even going to try to say that name either, Jalen Watson, former Wazoo player, love that man, led the team in tackles with 11, Justin Reed had 9, uh, Chris Jones got 2, Lamar Jackson, the only sack of the day though with how bad the Ravens offensive line was, I'm really shocked that the Chiefs only got 1 sack. Lamar kind of threw out of some sacks to save yardage but waste a play. So, I mean, 
50-50 there, I guess. Uh, they had no interceptions, but Kerr was a perfect 5-for-5 five five on the day, 9 points, and Matt Ariza back in the league. I would say kind of his rookie season because he got screwed in his first two years after being drafted. He's back in the league. Good for him. I'm happy for him. He's on a winning team. Definitely a much more winning team than Buffalo, I would say. And he, he is a punt master. I mean, anyone remembers like 90-yard punt in his first preseason game in 2022, I think? Because I do. All right, uh, we're continuing this on Sunday. I couldn't get to it on Friday after the game, but to be fair, I didn't watch this game, but I, I kind of know what happened. So the first ever Brazil game, and hopefully the last ever Brazil game, the Eagles take down the Packers 34-29. to uh, I didn't watch this game. I couldn't watch this game, but from what I heard was the turf was absolutely horrible. Um, I saw the love injury, which... It's a MCL sprain, so, what, four to six weeks, something like that, six to eight weeks, something like that. He's going to miss quite a few time, but hopefully it's not the whole season. Uh, Jordan Love, though, he did play fairly well, 50% uh, completion, 262 touchdowns, and a pick, only got sacked once. Uh, Josh Jacobs' debut with the Packers, it wasn't the best, it wasn't pretty, it looked like. I mean, his longest rush was 32, and that's like a third of the yards he had. Jaden Reed was on some demon stuff. Christian Watson scored a touchdown. Romeo Dobbs looked consistent. And then just a few uh, other catches from other people. Jacobs fumbled. Melton and Wyatt picked up fumbles. Both Walker and Bullard got 11 tackles each. Bullard's debut in the NFL, so that's a good look for him already. Uh, Keyshawn Nixon with a sack, Rashawn Gary with a sack, and that's all. Uh, Jair Alexander with an interception, Xavier McKinney with an interception in his first game as a Packer, and I think it was on one of the first three drives for the Packers defense, so that's good for him. And then Navarson, the new kicker for the Packers, went 3-for-4 on field goals, 2-for-2 two two on extra points for 11 total points, and then Whelan only two punt. Jalen Hurts, 20 for 34, 278, two touchdowns, two picks, sacked twice. Saquon had three total touchdowns. Uh, his first carry was a loss of five, but then he made up for it for the rest of the game. 24 for 109 and two touchdowns on the ground. A.J. Brown looked like normal A.J. Brown. Devonta Smith was cooking. Saquon had a nice receiving touchdown. Hurts fumbled twice, lost one. Barkley recovered a fumble. Um... I don't, from what I heard, one of the fumbles wasn't his fault. Maybe both of them weren't, but one of them, the ball was snapped when Hertz wasn't even ready for it. So, I don't know what was up with that, but I think that's what one of the fumbles were. So, not his fault, really. Zach Bond with a casual 15 tackles and two sacks for the Eagles. And then Reed Blankenship got an interception. Elliott went a perfect 6 for 6 for 10 points, and Man had 2 punts. Alright, now for the morning games. The first one is the Cardinals and the Bills. The Bills barely beat the Cardinals 34-28. to Um, I mean, Murray, if you're throwing the ball 31 times for only 162 yards, that, that ain't, that ain't good. Only a touch, one touchdown, got sacked 4 times. The rushing was was there between Murray and Connor. Connor got a touchdown on my fantasy bench. Uh, good job, me. Greg Dortch was the leading receiver. And Marvin Harrison all the way down here with one catch for four yards. Michael Wilson with the only receiving touchdown for the Cardinals. What is this offense? And also, there was a video on the final play for the Cardinals. Marvin Harrison was wide the hell open, but Murray just never looked his way. He just looked to the left side the whole time. Man, that, that blows. Marvin Harrison's first game in the NFL, and that's how it goes. I hope he can uh, connect with Murray a little more. Murray lost the fumble. Justin Jones picked up a fumble. Kazir White, 10 tackles. Buda Baker, 10 tackles. Uh, one sack from Cottrell Clark, and another sack from Roy Lopez. No interceptions. Uh, DJ Dallas had a 96-yard kick return. 
for the first kick return of the new wave of NFL kickoffs, which I still hate. But, you know, of course it had to be him, right? Yeah, whatever. Uh, kicking, Prater went 4 for 4 for 8 yards, and then Blake Gilligan with 2 punts. Now the Bills, Allen, 18 for 23, 232, 2 touchdowns. Most of this was in the second half. Um, at the 2-minute warning of the first half, I think Allen had 2 passes. All right. James Cook was the leading rusher, 19 for 71. Allen had two rushing touchdowns, including one which he hurdled over a man. So that's good. Keon Coleman, in his NFL debut, led the guys with catchers and yards. Khalil Shakir had a nice, nice touchdown where he extended as much as he could, and the ball crossed the plane for the touchdown. And then Matt Collins got a touchdown as well, his first in a, a good, good, good while. So that's good for him. Next up, um, Patriots, Bengals. Patriots win at 16 to 10 in the first game of the post Bill Belichick era. Gerard Mayo gets his first NFL win as a head coach. Brissett, I mean, he didn't really do anything. 15 for 24, a buck 21, nothing. Ramondre Stevenson was this entire team for the Patriots. 25 for 120 and a touchdown. Two catches for 31 yards. Austin Hooper led the team with that. One fumble for Stevenson. Got it back. Hawkins and Jones recovered fumbles. 12 tackles for Jawan Bentley. Half a sack for him. Keon White with two and a half sacks. 54 total tackles for the Patriots defense. No interceptions. Joey Sile, Sly, whatever, went a perfect 4 for 4 for 10 points on field goals. And then Bryce Beringer with five punts. Swapping over to the Bengals, why is it every year with this team at the start of the season in the Joe Burrow era, they don't know how to play football for the first, like, month, it seems. Like, Joe Burrow, what the hell is going on? I get you're just coming back from injury. Jamar Chase is coming back from his tampon injury. But you're expected to do good. Why can't you do good, guys? What is this? I didn't watch the game at all, so I don't know what happened. But, I mean, Burrow, he didn't look bad, but 29 passes and 164 yards? That ain't adding up. That ain't good. Though he only had 8 incompletions, he were sacked 3 times, as I just said. Uh, Zach Moss got the only touchdown for your team, and he didn't even really look the best. Then Jamar Chase was 6 for 62, and then a huge drop-off after that because T. Higgins was out. Tanner Hudson, Charlie Jones lost fumbles. Burrow picked up his own fumble. Logan Wilson had 13 tackles, one sack for Dax Hill, and that's all. 74 tackles for the, for the Bengals' defense. Evan McPherson went 2 for 2 for 4 points on field goals and then 4 punts for Ryan Reckow. Alright, now the Vikings beat the Giants 28-6. Apparently Sam Donald for like the first half of this game looked like an MVP. He was like 11 for 11 and 2 touchdowns. You know what? Good for him. He had a game of shutting the haters up. Maybe he can continue that. Him and Justin Jefferson apparently linked up like pancakes and syrup. I don't know. That's what I heard. Uh, Aaron Jones in his first Vikings game, he went off for a touchdown on my fantasy bench. I am so bad at fantasy football, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just had to yell that into my microphone. Justin Jefferson, 4 for 59 and a touchdown. They had a nice 44-yard uh, link up early in the game. And then uh, Jalen Naylor had a touchdown and nothing really after that. CJ Ham lost a fumble. Byron Murphy Jr. with nine tackles, a sack for Harrison Phillips, two for Pat Jones the second, one for Andrew Van Ginkle, one for Dallas Turner. Welcome to the NFL, buddy. Five total sacks. Van Ginkle got a pick six off a, I don't even know what Jones was trying to do, like an instant screen, I guess you would call that. And then Harrison Smith got an interception in the end zone. Will Reichard didn't attempt a single field goal. He went four for four for four points on extra points. And then Ryan Wright with four punts. And then the Giants. Daniel Jones, 22 for 42. 186 yards, two interceptions, sacked five times. I mean, where do you even go with him anymore? Like... I, I'm speechless, like, he's just, he's bad, 
Like, there's no other way to put it. Daniel Jones sucks at football. I'm sorry, Giants fans. I know you agree with it, though. And this contract you gave him is looking worse and worse by the game. I mean, you had fans waiting until he left the stadium just to get booed. I want to feel bad for him, but he has it coming to him. Like, he can't play like this and expect to not have that happen to him. And then we move to Caleb Williams' NFL debut. Uh, the Titans, they had us in the first half, not gonna lie. They were up 17-3 to at halftime, everything looking like bright sunshine and flowers ahead for them until the Bears defense actually remembered they were playing football. Uh, Will Levis looked terrible, and uh, his pick six, what were you trying to do there? Tony Poehler was, like, the only one worth a damn on your offense. Uh, Ridley... 50 yards, and then nothing else after besides Chig scoring a, what, 17-yard touchdown or something? I don't know. Will Levis fumbled and lost it. Julius Chestnut picked up a fumble. Amani Hooker and Harold Landry, and I guess now Kenneth Murray Jr., I just saw. Six tackles apiece. A sack for Harold Landry. A sack for Sebastian Joseph Day. That's about it. No interceptions for you guys. Nick Folk went 3-for-3 three for, three for 5 points on field goals. Ryan Stonehouse with 5 punts. Now moving over to the winning side, the Chicago Bears. Uh, Caleb Williams, I get it's your first game, bro, but you had so much hype. You had the entire city of Chicago behind your back. You're at home for this. You have one of the best supporting cast for an incoming rookie quarterback on paper ever and you go 14 for 29 for 93 yards was the old line bad like i i saw he was scrambling quite a bit but like with all this hype you come out and do that your first game really that's shaky my friend your rushing was not there either for you bears because your whole offense was abysmal and then just a lot of fumbling. Valus Jones, Roma Dunze, Caleb Williams. Valus Jones lost the fumble. Williams picked up a fumble. Edwards and Jenkins picked up fumbles. But your defense, TJ Edwards and Jaquan Brister, each had over 10 tackles. Darrell Taylor, former Seahawk. Again, former Seahawks were just going off this week, I guess. Two sacks, two QB hits. I'm pretty sure he had a TFL and a strip sack. Gervon Dexter with a sack, and that's pretty much it. Tyreek Stevenson, interception. Pick six, actually. Jalen Johnson had an interception. Cairo Santos went a perfect four for four on field goals. Six punts for your rookie punter, Tory Taylor. And also, Jonathan Owens had a punt block return for a touchdown, which was another one of the touchdowns from this Bears team. Well, um, I don't think I could have been more wrong on a pick. If you watched my predictions, um, I think I did pick the Panthers to win this game. Yeah, not my brightest moment. Is it okay to label Bryce Young as an NFL bust? I don't give a rat's ass if it's his first game in his sophomore year. He looks terrible! I don't care if his weapons suck. Your head coach is a quarterback mastermind. Once again, I don't care if it's game one under that. You're not developing. You look horrible, Bryce Young. And you're just another failed Alabama quarterback in the NFL. The Panther side is not worth going over. For offense, at least. Like, no nothing happened with you guys. Bryce Young, 17 incompletions. You got sacked four times. I don't care if your offensive line sucks either. Your first pass of the season was a goddamn interception, bro. Cool. Ekuliata got a sack. That was probably the highlight for your team besides Bryce Young's rushing touchdown. Pinero had four points for you guys. Five points for Johnny Hacker. Yeah, cool. Moving on to the Saints. Derek Carr actually looked really good. And um, hopefully he's not fooling NFL fans again into thinking he's good, especially Saints fans. This rushing was uh, pretty good, I guess. Kamara looked... Like good old Kamara, Jamal William, Williams even got some action. Taysom Hill got some action. Rashid Shahid had a 59-yard touchdown at the beginning of the game. Foster Moreau got a touchdown. Jawan Johnson got a touchdown. Cedric Wilson fumbled. 
Tyra Matthew fumbled and recovered a fumble. I'm going to guess it was his own fumble. Alante Taylor, six tackles, three sacks. A sack for Demario Davis, that old reptar. <laughs> Will Harris and Jordan Howden with interceptions. And Blake Gruppy with a perfect 9 for 9 for 17 points on field goals. And Matthew Hayball with two punts. Absolute just destruction from the Saints. All right, the Chris Boswell beats the Falcons 18 to 10. Like seriously, he scored every point for the Steelers. Justin Fields got the start because Wilson was injured. Uh, he didn't do like anything. I'm not surprised. I don't think Justin Fields is going to be in the NFL in the next three years. He did have a decent rushing day. Same with Najee Harris. Just good rushing from the Steelers, but uh, nothing in the receiving besides George Pickens having a good. 6 for 85 game that was uh, wasted because they have no quarterback right now. Fields fumbled, got it back. T.J. Watt recovered a fumble. 7 tackles for Minka Fitzpatrick. T.J. Watt got a sack. Montrevious Adams got a sack. Dante Jackson, Deshaun Elliott got interceptions. Chris Boswell, 6 for 6, 18 points. 2 punts for Cameron Johnston. He got hurt. Chris Boswell had 1 punt. Now for the Falcons, Kirk Cousins, what the hell? I was so wrong about this one. I said the Falcons weren't going to beat the hell out of the Steelers to take aggression out for Arthur Smith, but clearly that didn't happen. He probably still has to stink just in the Falcons team huddle. Every play makes him play bad, I don't know. But your first game as a Falcon, not good, big Kirko. Bichon, though, I mean, he had more rushes than Allagire, so that's already a plus, and, uh, Ray Ray McLeod, leading the guys in receptions and yards. When you have Robinson, Pitts, and London. Is is Arthur Smith still calling plays for this offense? Like, what is this? I mean, I guess since Kyle Pitts scored a touchdown, it's fine, I guess. But, like, you guys were shut out in the second half and you looked like dog crap the whole game. What's up with that? Drew Dahlman fumbled and lost it. That's great. Caden Ellis with nine tackles. Half a sack for Matthew Judon. Welcome to the Falcons. One and a half sacks for Grady Jarrett. I'm pretty sure he's coming out of retirement, right? Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. No interceptions. Young Hoku, two for two, four points. Four points for Bradley Pinion. All right, the Jags choke to the Dolphins, picking up right where they left off to start this next season. Uh, Tyree Kill, obviously arrested before this game, or I guess detained, whatever that whole situation is. But uh, he obviously played and scored an 80-yard touchdown and did a great celebration of him getting handcuffed and had the help of, I think, uh, Jalen Waddle. But Trevor Lawrence didn't look good. Tank Bigsby weirdly had more yards than Etienne. I don't know what that's about. Etienne scored, but he also fumbled at the one-yard line, which resulted in a turnover in the end zone. And judging by the total score, if he scored, you guys would have won. Judging if the Dolphins didn't score more than 20 points or not, but still, you gotta cover that ball, man. You gotta hug it tight. Gabe Davis, 62 yards in his Jags debut. Brian Thomas in his NFL debut. Four catches, 47 yards, and a touchdown on my fantasy bench. Look at me. I'm so good at fantasy. I'm done after this year, like seriously. Yep, ETN fumbled. Parker Washington recovered a fumble. Boya Sadaluk on 11 tackles, two sacks for Trayvon Walker, one sack for Eric Armstead. Welcome to the Jags, my man. No interceptions. Cam Little with three total field goals, five points, and Logan Cook with six punts. Now the winning side, the Miami Dolphins. Tua looked good, judging from the stats, even though two uh, guys had over 100 yards, but I'm pretty sure that's expected out of them at this point. This rushing sucked, besides HN scoring a touchdown. Uh, Mostert, 6 for 9. HN, 10 for 24. Jeff Wilson, 5 for 26, and he's the leading guy. What? What is this? Tyreek Hill had an 80-yard touchdown, which was nice. I mean, Devon HN did good in the receiving department, but you're a running back. Not a receiver, my friend. Kador Kahu. Recovered a fumble. Hopefully I said that name right. I definitely didn't. David Long Jr., eight tackles. Ogba, a sack. Calais Campbell, a sack. Welcome to Miami. Jalen Phillips with the sack, making it three on the day for the Dolphins' defense. 
Jason Sanders went two for three on field goals, two for two on extra points, eight points total, including the game-winning field goal, and four punts for Jake Bailey. All right, the Texans escaped the Colts, I would say, in my favorite game of the week. Hopefully, it's uh, better than the Niners game. Knock on wood. CJ Stroud's MVP campaign started 24 for 32, 234, two touchdowns. Had a great deep ball to Nico Collins in double coverage. Joe Mixon, people said he's old and washed up in his first game as a Texan. 30 for 159 and a touchdown. Looking like prime Joe Mixon. Like that one game he had in 2021 when he had like five touchdowns or something like that. Nico Collins, 6 for 117. Tank Dell, 3 for 40. Stefan Diggs in his Texans debut has two touchdowns. The only two receiving touchdowns on the day for Houston. No fumbles. Henry, 2-0-2-0. Seven tackles. One sack for that guy. One sack for Mario Edwards, former Seahawk. And that's all for the sacks. Kalen Bullock got an interception. Kaimi Fairbairn went a perfect 5 for 5 for 11 points. And Tommy Townsend only punted one time in his Texans debut. Moving on to the Colts, Richardson, 9 for 19, 212, 2 touchdowns and a pick. And I ain't gonna lie, I watched this game almost start to finish. The turf sucked. A lot of slipping going on. Uh, Anthony Richardson, if he keeps running the way he does, he's gonna get himself a concussion very easily. He's a really aggressive runner when he scrambles out of the pocket for long runs. Um... I swear he almost gave himself like two concussions today. Like, dude, you gotta stop that. He had a rushing touchdown. Uh, Jonathan Taylor should get the ball more. I'm just saying that helped for my fantasy. Alec Pierce, three for 125 and a touchdown. Ashton Doolin, one for 54 and a touchdown. A lot of deep balls going on. Uh, Richardson might have had the throw of the year on the touchdown to Pierce, or maybe it was Doolin. I forgot who it was, but it was a great deep ball to the end zone. For a touchdown and I think the first quarter. So potential throw of the year candidate already. I don't know but I'm leaning towards yes for now. No fumbles. Nick Cross 14 tackles. Blackman 13 tackles. Speed 10 tackles. One and a half sacks for Buckner. One for Taekwon Lewis. One sack for Quiddy Pay And half a sack for Deo. That guy. No interceptions though. Spencer Schrader went 3 for 3 on extra points. Didn't attempt a real field goal. Three points and three punts for Sanchez. Alright, another game I was wrong on. I really thought the Raiders were going to win, but they didn't. 22-10 to 10 Chargers over the Raiders. Minshew in his Raiders debut didn't look the best. 257 yards, a touchdown and a pick. Samir White got the starting role with 44 rushing yards. Rushing wasn't really good. Jacoby Myers led the guys with 61 yards. Devontae Adams, 5 for 59. Brock Bauer, 6 for 58 in his debut. Alexander Madison had a receiving touchdown. And some people are saying it's better than anything he did last year. And I'm, I think I have to agree because it was a 31-yard receiving touchdown. Uh, Michael Mayer didn't really do a lot. Like, why'd you draft him last year if you're not going to use him? And then draft Brock Bauer's. The next year, I don't understand. Both Minshew and White lost fumbles. Robert Spillane, my boy who had a lot of tackles last year, starting his campaign off with 10 tackles. A sack for Mad Max Crosby, of course. And that's it for the sacks. No interceptions. Daniel Carson went 1 for 2 on field goals, 1 for 1 on extra points for 4 total points. A.J. Cole with 5 punts. Moving over to the winning side, the Chargers. Herbert didn't do a lot. Honestly, I don't expect him to really have the best year because he doesn't really have a good offense around him. He did have a touchdown to Ladd McConkey. J.K. Dobbins, dude, if this guy can just stay healthy, he could legitimately have stat lines like this every single week. Go look at his stats in 2020 and tell me I'm wrong because you can't do that. And Gus Edwards didn't do a lot either in his Chargers debut. Ladd McConkey in his NFL debut, 5 for 39 and a touchdown. Quentin Johnston, 3 for 38 on 5 targets. I don't think he had a, any drop issues, so that's good. And then really nothing else for the receiving. Khalil Mack and Jasir Taylor recovered fumbles. Joey Bosa, Derwin James, Deion Henley, my boy, former Wazoo alum. 
all with seven tackles each. Joey Bosa with a sack. Morgan Fox with half a sack. Cleo Mack with one and a half sacks, totaling at four for the day. And former Seattle Seahawk, I've said this I think four times now, Puna Ford, who is a defensive tackle, got the game ceiling, even though it was already over interception on a tipped ball from Minshew. Have a day, former Seahawks, on Sunday. Like, Jesus. Cameron Dicker went 4 for 4 total with 10 points, and J.K. Scott had 7 punts. Why can't we play a normal game? The, uh, the Broncos lose to Seattle in the Mike McDonald era. Thank you, Seahawks, for prevailing. 20 to 26. Bo Nix in his NFL debut. Besides a rushing touchdown at almost a 2 minute warning, he did nothing. 26 for 42. You threw the ball 42 times for 138 yards. Two interceptions. One to Julian Love. And then we had a safety right after that. And then the next one, the announcer said, oh no, before the ball was even picked off. That's not a good look for you, my man. Uh, that ball was also in the triple coverage for Rick Woolen to pick off. So, uh, good job, Bo. You led your team in rushing, which I don't get why you gave up on Javante Williams in the first half. And McLaughlin, they were doing good, and you barely used them in the second half. I I don't, uh, I do not understand that. Josh Reynolds had a nice day, I guess. Uh, Devon Veal had a nice day. Cortland Sutton had a nice day. Nothing else after that. McLaughlin fumbled and lost it. Audric Estime fumbled. Trotman recovered a fumble, so did J.L. Skinner. Riley Moss had 12 tackles, two sacks for Jonathan Cooper, and that is it. Alex Singleton with the interception on the second play of the game because uh, our offensive line was even worse than last year somehow in that first half, especially. Like, I don't, I don't know. Four total kicks for... Will Lux for 10 points, and Riley Dixon with 8 punts for 389 yards. That is probably more than your offense had in total. Moving over to the winning team, the Seahawks. Geno Smith didn't really play much better. I mean, that, that offensive line, Lakin Tomlinson and Anthony Bradford, you guys suck. And before the first quarter was even over, we were already down to our third string right tackle. Because Abraham Lucas is on the IR to start the season. And George Fant went out with a knee injury early in the game. So we had to watch Stone Forsyth again. I'm tired of watching him. He sucks. Geno Smith had a nice passing touchdown to Zach Charbonnet. He also had a 34-yard rushing touchdown in that second quarter. That was uh, that was great right there. Kenneth Walker had a great day on the ground. It, he, just the entire offense was really slow. But whatever was said at halftime, like, Worked instantly. Ryan Grubb had great adjustments, and the defense was playing great almost the entire game besides the driver Bonick scored his only touchdown he'll probably have until after next week. Tyler Lockett, 6 for 77. He is not washed. Shut the hell up, people. He is not washed. He is not going to be washed until he has a legit reason to be washed until he says he's washed. He had the game-clinching one-handed catch. He mossed Riley Moss on that. But outside of Lockett with 77, our offense did nothing for the receiving. But Zach Charbonnet had a great 30-yard receiving touchdown. D. Williams muffed a punt and lost it. That's great. Jerome Baker had a nice fumble recovery that Kavon Wallace knocked that ball out of that dude's hand in a great effort. Some of our new key guys that we got, Jerome Baker, Terrell Dodson, Kaval Wallace, Rayshon Jenkins, and then people we already had, Julian Love, Reek Woolen, uh, Leonard Williams, uh, Witherspoon, and uh, Derek Hall got his first sack as well. Like, our whole defense was playing so good. I don't care if it was against Denver. Us Seahawks fans have been waiting to have a good defense since... The Legion of Boom died, and we finally had it for a week, and we are hoping it can continue, and we found our new head coach, man. I love Mike McDonald so much, man. He got number one in the books. So proud of him, and Marshawn Lynch gave a massage, him a massage on the sidelines uh, during the game. That was 
That was just classic Marshawn Lynch. <laughs> Julian Love, 12 tackles. Terrell Dodson, 10 tackles in his Seahawks debut. Boye Mafe got a sack. Derek Hall got a sack. That was all. Reek Woolen and Julian Love got interceptions. Jason Myers went a perfect 4 for 4 for 8 points. Michael Dixon, 5 points. Alright, Dallas hands it over to Cleveland in Cleveland's home stadium. Uh, the Cowboys made Dak Prescott the highest paid quarterback in NFL history before the game. He didn't, uh, he didn't show it a lot, but he was playing one of the top defenses in football, so I don't really blame him all that much. Uh, Zeke Elliott had a touchdown in his first game back in Dallas. Good job, Cleveland, on making him look somewhat good again, I guess. I don't know. C.D. Lamb was cooking. Him and Dak were cooking like they weren't even holding out two months ago for a contract. Brandon Cooks, 4 for 40 and a touchdown. And nothing hours after that, Dak Prescott fumbled and Jalen Tolbert recovered it. 11 tackles for Overshone. A sack for him as well. Two for Eric Kendricks. Two for Demarcus Lawrence. One for Michael Parsons. Making it six on the day. Eric Kendricks got his first interception as a Cowboy. Trayvon Diggs got his first interception back from his torn ACL. Welcome back, Trayvon. And Brandon Aubrey went a perfect 7 for 7 for 15 points. He also tied the um, record for longest field goal in NFL history. But it got called back for a delay of game, if I'm not mistaken, at the end of the first half, right? Or something before that. Like, come on, guys. Just give it to him. Brian Anger with six punts. And then Cleveland. Cleveland, Cleveland, Cleveland. Deshaun Watson fucking sucks, guys. How many more times do people have to defend him and say, oh, he's going to bounce back? No, the hell he's not. He fucking sucks. So bad. And... Uh, there was a clip of, I think, his left guard, Joel Petonio, refusing to let Watson help him out, because he probably knows where that hand's been. No, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, the rushing was useless besides a one touchdown for Jerome Ford. David Njoku got four for 44, led the guys, but I think he's injured, so that's not good. Jerry Judy got his first touchdown as a Brown. Watson fumbled. Petonio recovered it. Juan Thornhill and JOK with nine tackles each. A sack for Zadarius Smith, a sack for Dalvin Tomlinson, a sack for Miles Garrett for three on the total. No interceptions. Dustin Hopkins won a perfect three for three for five points and seven points for Corey Bojoquez. Let Mayfield bake. Yeah, keep it up, Baker. Uh, Jaden Daniels' NFL debut, he had two rushing touchdowns and led his team with 88 rushing yards, also threw for 184. Not the worst debut, but I feel like he could have done more in the passing yards. Uh, Brian Robinson had 12 for 40 and a touchdown, and look, Austin Eckler being a great help to his new team. He actually did re lead the guys in receiving, I'm just reading this for the first time, so I'm, I'm actually sorry about that. 52 yards, he is a receiving back, not really a... Surprising that he's leading the guys in receiving. Same with Brian Robinson. And also, Zach Ertz was third on this. And McLaurin had two for 17. Okay. Jane Daniels fumbled three times, though. Beatus recovered one of them. Bobby Wagner, another former Seahawk, doing Lord's work. Leading the guys with 10 tackles. I don't care if he's old. He is still a top tackler in football. Cleland Farrell, former Raiders bust. Had a sack. Is it too late to resurrect your career? I don't know. Got the only sack on the day. No interceptions. Cade York went 0 for 2 on field goals, but 2 for 2 on extra points for 2 points on the day. And Tressway with 3 punts. Flopping over to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Baker Mayfield, 4 touchdowns, 289 yards. Looking dominant off of last year. Bucky Irving, rookie from Oregon, right? Leading the guys in his first NFL game. Got half of his yards on one rush, though, but still. Rashad White, he, that, not, not, that's not a good start for him. But he did have a good receiving game. Chris Godwin with a touchdown. Mike Evans with two touchdowns. Thank you for my fantasy. Finally, someone that did good for me in fantasy besides Stroud. And Jalen McMillan with a wide-open 32-yard touchdown, if I'm not mistaken. It was wide-open, right? Either that or just a good catch. Jordan Whitehead, 8 tackles, a sack for Dennis, a sack for Joe 
Ryan Schoenka, I think. And that's all for the sacks. No interceptions. McLaughlin with a perfect 7 for 7 for 13 points. And only one punt from Jake Camarda. And Sunday night. This was an undeserved win for Detroit, I think. In, in my humble opinion. Please don't rat me out, Lions fans. Be honest. Do you think you deserve this win with how you played? With the circumstances the Rams were in? You might think he did. I don't know. Matt Stafford had a great stat line. Puka Nakua knee injury went out. Your offensive line was injured before the game even started. But it got bent over and just destroyed with injuries throughout the game. You had a lot of rotational offensive linemen in. But you still made it work in that second half. You guys came to life in that second half. I'm supposed to hate you guys so much. But. I'm actually proud of what you guys were able to do with the circumstances you were in. Kyron Williams, 18 for 50 and a touchdown. Um, is Blake Corum injured or something? Like, did he not play? I don't know. Cooper Cup, 14 for 110 and a touchdown. Looking like 2021 again. Tyler Johnson, most of his yards came on a 63-yard long one, which the Lions need to learn how to tackle in that kind of open field. Chloe Parkinson, 4 for 47. Robinson, 4 for 42. Puka, 4 for 35 before he went out of the game, unfortunately. I hope it's not season ending. I love watching Puka play. No fumbles. Quentin Lake with 10 tackles. A sack for Verse, a sack for Young. Welcome to the NFL, Jared Verse, by the way. Didn't want to miss that. Two tackles. Okay, or two sacks on the day. Okay, Blake Corum did play. He had a tackle. Got it. John Johnson with an interception. That was a really close one. They almost overturned it, but there wasn't enough evidence to support that being the call on the field. Joshua Carty, uh, both rookie kickers in the NFL, I think. So that's cool. Both of them went four for four for eight yards or eight points on the day. Ethan Evans for three punts. <laughs> Moving over to the Lions. Jared Goff. 18 for 28, 217, a touchdown and a stupid interception. David Montgomery was uh, very much alive in overtime, and mainly overtime. I don't, I didn't see him a lot, but he did have 17 carries, so maybe I just wasn't paying close enough attention. Him and Jameer Gibbs though had good rushing days. Jameson Williams might be a breakout for him this year, which would be awesome because. Lions fans have been waiting for it for so long, and I'm such a big Jameson Williams guy. I want him to work out in the NFL so much. Sam Laporta, my boy, couldn't support him this week because my dad had him in fantasy, and he was playing against me, but he still did 4 for 45, and then St. Brown, 3 for 13. Okay. No fumbles. Ends alone, 13 tackles. Carlton Davis, the third, 10 tackles. One sack for Hutchinson. Half a sack for Levi, half a sack for Davenport, totaling at two sacks on the day. Kirby Joseph with an interception, and as I said, Jake Bates, eight points on four for four. And Jack Fox with four punts. And to end the week, the Niners pound on the Jets, 32-19. Aaron Rodgers' real debut with the Jets. It, it could have been better, but that Niners defense is just way too good. The rushing on the day wasn't really effective in any way, shape, or form. Alan Lazard had two touchdowns. One came in the last 20 seconds of the game, but the other one was on a free play. And also, Aaron Rodgers has 18 touchdowns on free plays now. That is insane. 42 first downs as well on 44 completions. That is one hell of a stat from one of the best quarterbacks of all time. One of the most talented quarterbacks of all time. Garrett Wilson had a lot of good clutch third and seven catches early in the game. And then Brees Hall lost a fumble early, early in the game. Tony Adams had 12 tackles and a sack. I noticed DJ Reed was uh, on a lot of tackles. I honestly forgot he was on the Jets. I thought he's been a free agent the whole time. But once again, I don't pay attention to the Jets. So, yeah. 
Michael Clemens also had a sack. Same with Sauce Gardner, who got injured, I think, or something like that. No interceptions. Zerline had one extra point attempt for one point, and Thomas Morstead had three punts. Moving on over to the San Francisco 49ers, Brock Purdy also really didn't have the best game. He had a lot of nice throws, just couldn't get an end zone shot touchdown. Actually, he did, but Brandon Ayuk decided to drop it. All right. Jordan Mason, or I should say Marshawn Lynch in his first NFL start, literally looked like Marshawn Lynch. He had a nice touchdown. Should have been two. Thanks, Debo. But Debo had a rushing touchdown as well. Juwan Jennings led the guys with 64 yards. Debo had 54 yards. Kittle, only four for 40. Kyle Juszczyk just burnt the Jets' defense. That was kind of funny. Uh, Collins with a fumble recovery. Fred Warner, seven tackles, one sack for Leonard Floyd. And it didn't end Rogers' season this, this time. I know, weird. An interception for Demetrius Flanagan Fowles. That is quite the name. And Jake Moody, six for six on field goals, two for two on extra points for 20 points. One punt for Mitch Wisnowski. Have yourself a day, Jake Moody. Special Teams Player of the Week for the NFC. Well, anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed, please like, comment, and subscribe. And turn the notification bell on so you'll never miss an upload. I will see you in the next video. Go Hawks!